Testing one, two, three. Okay, awesome. I uh, we are live. Hi, I am doing a quick live stream just to show you my experiments with Gatsby themes. I think they've been very successful. I'm. It's. Uh, it's, it's basically what they've promised. I think there there needs to be some curation, but uh, it's it's definitely living up to the hype. So. Uh, just I just want to show you what I've done up front, and then we'll talk about how I did it. So uh, first of all, I've made uh, a new package called Gatsby Theme Dev Blog, and this is a thing you can install on npm. And uh, and this is all. Uh, well, the readme looks wrong. Yeah, the the, the readme looks looks wrong. So um, anyway, so so uh, th this is a dev blog. Um, there's all these uh, there's all these instructions, but then there's also a demo, um, and so this is the demo repo of how to use the Gatsby theme. Uh, if if you're familiar with Gatsby at all, you're familiar with how the config. Note there's no Gatsby node here, and the config literally looks like this. And we're just using the experimental themes of the Gatsby theme dev blog. I don't take any options for now, but obviously I probably will have to. Inside of the source, <clears throat> uh, we have some pages, and we have some, and then this is uh, custom HTML, as well as some shadowed components. In fact, let me just take you to my VS Code so you can see it better. So this is how it looks. So there's just the source. Uh, the Gatsby config is, is really that simple. Really, not much to it at all. Um, and inside of the source, it just reads everything inside of pages, looks at each folder. That's the slug. And inside of here, you have some markdown, prism syntax highlighting supported. Uh, images are supported as well. Just put them next to each other, and it will, it will do the Gatsby image stuff. And then finally, you want to. If you want to shadow any components that are provided by Gatsby theme dev blog, you just put it under a, a folder named as such, and then you shadow whatever you need. How do you know what's in there? You literally just go inside your node modules and see what components ship with it. So inside of my node modules, I have Gatsby theme dev blog, source, components, and I can, I can mirror whatever uh, any of these components have been provided. So let me do yarn start and show this uh, locally. So it's components, bio, footer. Uh, let's just do, let's just take a pot shot at the footer. All right, and then it's local host. And then th this is my uh, Gatsby theme. And we can change literally any part of this stuff. So let's look at the hello world. And that's the that's the slug that I told you about. That's the folder name. And all this is uh, written in markdown. And let's just prove that this is linked and hot reloads. Hello world two. And that is reflected over here. And as well as the component shadowing. So here we've uh, I've already Shadowed the bio, right? And that's this. This is I just copied and pasted and then just changed whatever I wanted to change. Uh, but just to show you the process, I can just add a footer.js here uh, and take the original footer from inside of node modules, plonk it over here, right? And just say, I don't know. Hello, YouTube. Now, I don't know if it's hot reloads. Probably doesn't. So we got to kill the process, restart it. And now it's going to start uh, using this footer.js instead of the one that ships with the Gatsby theme. <coughs> ah, uh, except that I can't do the relative imports because it's no longer here. So what I got to do is take it directly from the theme. Fortunately, this is pretty easy. Um, we just use. Use it like a known module, which I think is a pretty genius design as far as these things are concerned. And so that's Hello YouTube, but I've replaced the footer. 
you can replace any other the rest of the layout as well and that's a totally customizable Gatsby theme now I don't really want to necessarily ship that I set it up to deploy by Netlify because that's how I roll uh, pretty simple setup and actually I just have it open over there and so you can see how this deploys uh, on Gatsby theme dev blog nilify.com. That's, that's, sorry, that's the auto opening thing. Um, so, yeah, this seems relatively easy to do and it's, it works as advertised. I'm, I'm, you know, honestly pretty impressed. So that's the first part of what I wanted to show you that I got this up and running um, and the code is a lot so I've never written a Gatsby theme that's been this simple to, to use. So this is very, very encouraging. And I'm excited about learning more about Gatsby themes. And I want a million themes out there. I want, I want every theme of every color, every stripe. I want them to be well documented and I want them to have good options. Um, and yeah, I, I, I mean, I'm, I, I'm gonna try to do my part. Okay. so. What, uh, where, do, where do you learn more about Gatsby themes? Uh, go to the docs, Gatsby, gatsby.org, docs, themes, introduction, blah, blah, blah. I've more or less read everything. Uh, definitely pay attention to the getting started. Uh, the more recent, the better. This is a, still an experimental sort of beta feature. So definitely pay attention to the dates because stuff that is four months old is probably wrong and out of date. Uh, so, Obviously, I've complained, um, and I, they don't owe us anything. But you know, just have caution with with regards to how these things work. Okay, so so there's updates and blog posts and stuff to read about. Component shadowing is the thing I, I demoed just now. Um, it works on entire source directory instead of source components. I think that kind of makes sense, except uh, it doesn't really work for HTML.js which is a special magic file in Gatsby. So just like, there's there's edge cases that you need to be aware of. All right, so then we're gonna talk about converting a starter. So so what I did, right, I went to Dan's overreacted.io. This is the original site. And obviously it's one of the better maintained Gatsby sites out there that's, uh, you know, blog focused. Uh, and I cloned it, and I took this whole thing, and I literally followed this guy. This is a very good guide, and that's what I did for Gatsby theme. It, it was originally called Gatsby theme Dan's blog because I just wanted it to be funny, but I thought that was too specific, and Dan would probably not like it, so I just didn't do that. Um, and so then I did the conversion. So I, I renamed the package. Uh, it was it was private, and I I took that out. And I moved the dependencies out. This was all fine. I created index.js, which is a no-op. So here, uh, they said to do that. I did that. I don't really care. Handling path resolution. So this is one of the, one of the more tricky ones. It tells you to change everything from path.resolve to require.resolve uh, just to do local path resolution. But you don't actually want to do that for everything. Uh, and that's the that's what I discovered. So there there's some nuance here. It's not like a simple search and replace. And so let's look for an example. So inside of overreactor.io, we can look for path.resolve. Right. Um, inside of Gatsby config. Ooh, look at that. I didn't know you could do that. Okay, so inside of Gatsby node, there's this blog post path.resolve looking for templates. Right? Every every single uh, blog post is, is run through one of these templates. Um, so, in, I'm here. I'm here inside of the theme, but once I'm over in the in my real blog, uh, these templates don't exist. Uh, so, so if you use path resolve, it's going to resolve versus the the root instead of uh, where you are currently. So you need to use required resolve, uh, and same for the other uh, the the multi language blog index support. So all of this is fine, um, but where did I run into issues? 
I ran into issues, for example, with Gatsby config. So inside of here, again, I'm inside the theme, not inside the, the, the demo project. I'm inside the theme, and it was consistently, so when I, when I first ran this and published it to NPM and all that, um, because that's that's where that's pretty much where the instructions leave you, right? They they tell you to to change the require resolve sourcing pages. Uh, you you do install. I did install this uh, page creator. I did install. Yeah, this is fine. I did install the transp transpilation, and I and I npm published. So all these all these are fine. What they did not tell me, and I had to figure out myself. It wasn't too hard, so I'm not complaining. But I'm just you know sharing is that inside of my Gatsby theme, I was told uh, this is the original theme. This is, this is the original setup for Gatsby source file system. And that means that I'm looking inside of source pages. This is how it looks. Let me just prove that to you. And overreacted IO, and I'm looking for Gatsby config. Dear name. Oh, this is even worse. Dear name source pages. What, what is dear name? Dear name is, again, inside of known modules. So therefore, it's resolving directly um, to the pages that, that ship with it. I deleted a whole bunch of the pages that, that come with overreacted IO, because obviously, because we don't need all this. But uh, the point being, I don't want to, to, to resolve versus dear name source pages. Um, so so it took me a while to figure out that what I needed to do was change that to a path.resolve. Um, what am I doing? I'm sorry. I, I screwed up something. OK, so that's that's the path resolve. Um, and there, there's subtle nuances and dependencies and, and poorly considered file system dependencies, right? So you got to just look through your config and look for, I, I, I sought out the, the tracking ID in Google Analytics because I didn't want to spam Dan. Not that my traffic will give any sort of impact onto his numbers. And blah, blah, blah. There was uh, re dependencies on, on assets as well. So there's an asset here, right? Uh, so I needed to, uh, and again, this was, Asx icon. So again, it just it just pass, they just pass a string like this, but you got to be able to to look at the errors that come up and then say, all right, this is doing this is resolving against the theme that's stuck inside known modules. No, this is this is this is resolving against path the root path, and I want it to resolve against inside of known modules. Therefore, I use require resolve. But if I wanted to resolve against something in the root, then I use path resolve and a relative path. Does that make sense? I hope it does. I'm probably using some of the wrong terminology, but you'll see this popping up all over the place. And once you realize what's going on, it's pretty easy to start resolving. No pun intended. There were some issues with regards to the node creation. So again, this is my familiarity with Gatsby is helpful here. Some people who have no idea what any of this does, uh, especially this, especially this, uh, will be will run into errors. So definitely read the uh, the API docs for Gatsby if you're keen on if 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 you just like you know if you intend to use Gatsby, uh, you should probably figure this out eventually. You don't have to learn it right at the start, but uh, I actually wrote this, uh, and I'm pretty proud of it. But it tells you what each everything inside Gatsby node is, uh, and in particular, why create node runs before create pages. So even though create pages up here is up top, and then node is at the bottom, uh, this thing actually runs first and, and starts to extend your GraphQL fields. Unfortunately, uh, and this is why we have schema customization now. Unfortunately, if nothing of value runs here, then this field, maybe absolute links, doesn't get created. And if this field does not get created, then a query that uh, has that assumes that these, this field exists will fail, 
and your page will not be rendered. Um, that's just how Gatsby works today. Obviously, they could do a lot more work to make that better. Uh, but th this is one of those things where um, if you don't really understand how Gatsby works, it will trip you up when you get started. You get over it, though. It's not the worst thing in the world. Um, OK, so I think that's a summary of all the issues I ran into when writing this. Um, I was pretty excited to see that the, the component shadowing works as advertised. I think this is a very, very powerful feature. And I'm super, you know, uh, Chris Viscardi, who, who wrote this, uh, is a genius. And I'm pretty happy about that. All right, I think that's all I got. Uh, obviously, hit me up on Twitter if you have any questions. And that's all. Cheers. Bye.